Hall. The Scottish Claymore. <sighs> the Claymore was used by Scottish mercenaries in battle from the 15th to 17th century. The weapon, usually 55 inches in length, would have to be held with both hands, and swordsmen were unable to carry a shield, symbolizing fearlessness on the battlefield. The clansmen would swing the sword in figure eight movements, decapitating and dismembering adversaries. Legend has it that Scottish Knight William Wallace used a claymore in the war for Scottish independence. This epic weapon has been immortalized in the classic movie, Braveheart. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. The term claymore in Gaelic means great sword. To see how lethal your weapon is and to test its functionality according to its historic design, I will deliver two killing blows on this animal carcass. Scott, you're up. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. I see the pigs, and I'm thinking, oh, crap. I've cut test against the pigs, and they don't cut very easily at all. Oh, The moment Doug hits the pig and I hear that thud, I'm like, crap. Uh, Scott, we have a little problem here. <laughs> the hardness of your blade is a little bit on the uh, flexible side. It did not even cut the carcass. So that brings into question also the sharpness of your edge. I think and we're pretty much done. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> It will not kill. <sighs> this is a failure. Jonathan, you're up. Are you ready? Absolutely. I'm confident that I made a good blade. The blade is hard and is ready to cut. This is going to be spectacular. Jonathan, we have a major blade malfunction. It did initially cut through, but then it probably hit the spine. It just exploded. I'm not completely confident that I'm gonna come out with the win here, but my blade cuts, and that's more than Scott's. Jonathan, your blade suffered catastrophic failure. For safety reasons, we can no longer continue testing on your blade. Since both weapons have suffered malfunctions, Dave will now decide on the best course of action to move forward with the competition. Dave. In the Viking sagas, swords broke. In the Song of Roland, swords broke. But bent swords can be straightened. So we'd like to give you an opportunity, Scott, to straighten that weapon so we can take it forward into a sharpness test to help us determine our winner. So Scott, why don't you take a moment and straighten your weapon? Okay. It's as straight as it's going to get. Now, not only was the Claymore a battlefield intimidator, but it was also a Scottish symbol for physical prowess and strength. So what I'm going to do to test the edge of your blade is I am going to cut into this piece of sheet steel. So Scott, are you ready? Let's do it. I've got a 50-50 shot that it's going to do well. You know, I just want to see what happens. I am desperate to win. This is $10,000 on the line here. I don't even want to watch. Well, Scott, there's actually still an edge here. We can see what it did to the steel. Should have had the pig made out of steel. It probably would have cut better. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, well done. Thank you. Overall, I'm pleased. This was the first time I've ever made a blade of this size, of this complexity. 
Gentlemen, this by far was our most difficult challenge to date. Congratulations, you both delivered your Scottish Claymores. But there can only be one champion. Scott, congratulations, you are the Forged and Fire champion. Thank you. Jonathan, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Jonathan, the design of your blade was really going in the right direction. Basically, once that blade snapped, there just wasn't anything else we could do to test that blade. So that's why we're letting you go. Jonathan, please surrender your weapon. It's a great pleasure. pleasure. Man. Thank you, sir. I'll be back. Absolutely proud of myself. With every failure, there is a great lesson learned. And I think I'm moving forward from here. Scott, congratulations. You are the Forest Fire champion, and you'll be receiving a check for $10,000. Good job. I've never won anything in my life. This is the first time I've ever won anything. You try your best, and you learn from it, and then you do it again until you perfect it. I mean, even though the sword didn't do what I wanted, it's still OK. I won. I'm certainly going to be buying drinks tonight. <laughs> Cutlass. Uh, <laughs> Army hearties, we get to make a cutlass. I'm very excited about it. The cutlass is a short, broad-bladed saber developed in Europe during the 16th century. Although it was made as a land weapon, it was quickly adopted as the sailor's weapon of choice, largely because it was strong enough to hack through ropes, canvas, and wood, but also because it was short enough to use in close quarters combat. This made it popular amongst navies throughout the world. The last use of a cutlass in a boarding action by the British Royal Navy was recorded as late as 1941. Its effectiveness in battle also made the cutlass favored amongst pirates as portrayed in the film franchise, The Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Gentlemen, the cutlass was a weapon that was specifically designed for naval combat, but was just as effective on land. Now, any pirate that went raiding would probably run into a situation where he needed to work his way through a barricade. So to test the strength of your weapons, we're going to break our way through these crates. Tobin, you're up. Let's do this. When I saw the crates, the only thing I could think of was those poor crates. Well, Tobin, it's got a lot of weight to it. It's a, quite a heavy beast. I like the, the blacksmith guard, nice. But it's so long that your hand has a, a lot of room to travel in here. A bit of deformation and a couple of chips in the blade. Okay. But Tobin, this will definitely break through a barricade. Good job. Thanks. Ron, you're up next. Let's do it. Going to the weapons test, it's nerve wracking but I'm hoping everything works out. It should have the weight on it to do the chopping. So Ron, though your handle was very crude, it was actually pretty comfortable. Your blade shows no chipping, no damage. It's a little on the heavy side, but it didn't feel like it was pulling me forward. I was able to control the tip. But uh, all in all, went through some crates. To test the sharpness of your weapon, I will take your weapon and cut through fish and then rope. Tobin, you're up. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm ready. Well, Tobin, it's sharp enough to cut through the fish. It lacerated through the rope, but it didn't cut all the way through. I hear the chunk of the blade go whoosh, right through the fish, and then I hear it hit the ground. Plop. Why did it not cut the rope? Uh, it's I a bit of disbelief about that. Ron, you're up next. Go for it. Well, 
bull run. Definitely lacerated the fish, but it didn't slice all the way through. Your edge really isn't that sharp to cut all the way through. Ron's blade doesn't go through the fish, but it cuts the rope. Huh. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. I will take your cutlass and deliver offensive strikes to this ballistic dummy. Then we can see how much damage your cutlass will deliver. Tobin, you're up. <laughs> that cut right through the chest, <laughs> a laceration into the pectoral muscle right here. Not much on this slash here, but... Huh. <laughs> That's all the way through. It will kill. Yeah. <laughs> Ron, you're up next. You ready? I'm ready. Ron, there are no visible marks. Unfortunately, your blade will not kill. I'm completely shocked there's no damage on the dummy. I'm shocked. Tobin, Ron, you were both given five days at your home forge to create signature cutlasses to perform in our final round of testing. Doug? Ron, the balance of your blade allowed me to move around in a fluid motion. It's got good balance for recovery as well. But a cutlass is a thrust and slash weapon. In one test, it just didn't perform that way. Tobin, I love the edge geometry of your blade. It's got good flats and a good thin taper that allowed it to cut well but I would have liked to have seen that blade in height reduced by about a third. I think you would have got a better heat treat and would have prevented the chipping on the edge of your blade. Bladesmiths, you've both done commendable work. But it's time for one of you to leave the forge and one of you to be declared the Forged and Fire Champion. Tobin, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire Champion. <clears throat> Ron, your blade did not make the cut. Ron, we pushed your blade hard and held its edge through the strength test. But in the end, a cutlass has to be a cut and thrust sword. And in the kill test, it just didn't perform. Please surrender your weapon. Thank you, Ron. Okay. I'm not bitter towards Tobin. I'm not bitter towards anybody. I had a great experience. Lesson that I learned today is to keep your blade sharp. Tobin, congratulations. <laughs> you are the Forge and Fire champion, and you will be receiving a check for $10,000. How do you feel, man? How do you feel? Uh, there's, there's no words. Like, ah, nothing's coming up. Freaking one! Yeah! <laughs> uh, I'm in shock a little bit. I like the overall look of your blade. I like the whole dark factor. I like the sweep to it, and I really like the edge geometry on it. It's just strange, it's... <laughs> I never win anything. And the fact that I want this, I'm... I need a nap. The Scottish Claymore. Claymore! Yeah. <laughs> Joy. This massive two-handed sword was wielded by Scottish Highlanders as early as 1490. Made famous in modern pop culture by the film Braveheart, its impressive size and length made it a fearsome weapon. The Claymore is easily recognizable by its quatrefoil crossguard and angled arms. 
Due to its large size, the heavy sword was usually swung with two hands. It was so deadly, it was nicknamed the Slaughter Sword by the English who faced it on the battlefield. Because of its prowess, the Claymore was a mainstay of the Scottish army for nearly two centuries. Well, Bladesmiths, your weapons will now be subjected to three tests. First up is the strength test. As you can see, we've brought back a test worthy of a champion's blade, bullet splitting. Each of your blades will be locked into a vise, then we'll fire a single round at your blades to test their edge retention and strength. If your weapons are strong, should split the bullet no problem. If they're not strong, well, your blade could shatter entirely. Good luck, Matt, you're up first. I'm feeling pretty good about my sword. It's exactly the same heat treat I did last time, and it held up perfectly fine. Three, two, one, engage. Oh, yeah. Nice. You got a couple little dimples on the edge there. It's just a little bit dull, but everything held up beautifully. Good job, Matt. Thank you. Ben, you're up. Are you ready? Sure. Let's do it. Got it. Let's get it ready. I can hear my heartbeat. It's terrifying. I just don't want this thing to snap in two. Three, two, one, engage. Nice. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that sucker just fragmented. It's got a lot more profile than mm -hmm. blend. Well, Ben, the only problem I could see is uh, rubbed a little bit of your etch off, did nothing at all to the blade. Edge is still perfect. Thank you. All right, next up is the sharpness test, and I'm going to hand you over to Dave for that. Gentlemen, the Scottish Claymore, as you know, was a brutal weapon on the battlefield. So to test the sharpness of your blades, I'm going to take a single blow through both these front legs of the horse, simulated with sugar cane. If your blades are sharp, they should pass right through. Matt, you're up. Are you ready? Yeah, kill the horse. Matt, this weapon is so amazingly light and flexible as well that when I hit, there was no resistance. It literally passed right through the legs. I was through them before I knew it. Well done, Matt. Really well done. Ben, you ready? Let's do it. All right, let's give it a try. Matt made a light, thin blade. It cut through the sugar cane like it wasn't even there. My blade is a little heavier. I'm pretty nervous that it might get stuck, but we'll see. Oh. He's still down. Yeah. Well, Ben, it cut cleanly through the first leg, kind of bogged down in the second leg, unlike Matt's. And I have a feeling it's the width of the profile up here, just slowing it down a bit. But I don't think that horse is running ever again. Nicely done, Ben. Thank you. Next up is the kill test. For that, I'm going to hand you over to Doug. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. To see how lethal your blades are, I will take your claymore and I will try to cut through these pig carcasses with one chop. As you know, last season, both claymores suffered catastrophic failures on this very test. Let's see how much lethal damage your blades can do. Matt, you're up first. Are you ready? Go for it. Let's do this. Didn't break. That's a horn burn. Matt, I love the feel of your blade. It feels very comfortable in the hands. It's very easy to maneuver. It was sharp enough to cut through in terms of lacerating, but it's just so flexible it didn't go through. For this test, sir, it will not kill. I'm pissed at that pig right now. Ben, you're up next. You ready? Hope so. Let's do this.
Ben. This blade just slides all the way through that carcass. It's flexible. It's got a good feel to the cut. This, sir, will kill. Thanks. Good job. All right, bladesmiths, you've given the judges a lot to talk about. We're going to have to go back to the forge and deliberate. We'll see you there. Thank you. Matt, Ben, welcome back. The judges have evaluated your weapon's performance and construction. It was difficult, but they've made their final decision. Before I continue, they have something they'd like to say to both of you. Doug? Ben, from the fit and finish of your blade, the gold inlays, to the beautiful patterned Damascus that's razor sharp, it's only highlighted with its performance of strength in the kill test. It cut right through, where in the past that big carcass has destroyed blades. Well done. Thank you very much. Jay? Matt, you're our very first Forge and Fire champion ever, and you keep bringing us that championship quality, and especially in this piece. I mean, every aspect of it is beautiful. That steel in that blade is just incredible. Having a blade that size, flexing 90 degrees plus, and coming back to true, that's just amazing. Gentlemen, both of your weapons are bulletproof, they're sharp, and they're deadly. But today, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. Ben, congratulations. You are our first two-time Forged and Fire champion. Great job. Matt, unfortunately, your Claymore did not make the cut. Matt, your Claymore, it's fabulous to wield. Only issue was the flex was so great that it didn't transfer the energy into the target. And that's the reason you're going home. Matt, I have to ask you to surrender your Scottish Claymore. I'm a Forged and Fire champion. That's never going to go away. I don't feel like I failed in this. I don't feel like I'm a loser in this or anything. I just feel like Ben did slightly better, and that's awesome. Ben, you are our first and only two-time Forged in Fire champion. You will also be receiving that check for 10 grand. Your Claymore is a thing of beauty, not only to look at, but to wield. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a loss for words. Thank you, you very much. Job. Oh, my god. I am the Fortune Fire champion of champions. I can't believe it. The people I was competing against are so good to actually come out and win this thing. It's absolutely amazing. The Cat's Bulger. Introduced during the Renaissance in the late 15th century, the Cat's Bulger became the main sidearm for European soldiers known as Lanchnecks. A dominant military force, these soldiers defended the Holy Roman Empire in times of unrest. Designed for close hand-to-hand -hand combat, the Cat's Bulger was often shorter than other broadswords, but quick and efficient in action. Soldiers wielded these weapons in deadly ambushes, using devious tactics to lure the enemy into fatal attacks. Its sturdy build and broad, sharp blade made it a powerful chopper, while its signature S-shaped guard was instrumental in defense. Gentlemen, this is the strength test of Smith's Nightmare. So what we'll do is we'll take your blades, we'll lock them into our vise over here, and fire one round from this pistol. Now, if your blade's strong, it should just split that bullet. If not, we could have a blade shatter. James, you're up first. You ready? Ready. OK. I'm pretty nervous. A bullet slice puts a lot of stress on a very small part of the blade, so you need to have your heat treatment spot on. Or it's going to cause a catastrophic shattering of the blade. Three, two, one, fire. The blade is still intact. I can't see any damage, so we're good to this point. You can actually see where it left a little bit of that bullet on your blade. There's the tiniest deformation. Other than that, everything's still together. Good job. Nicely done. All right, Paul, it's your turn. You ready? I'm ready. OK. Someone's going to shoot my blade with a gun. I mean, that's you, you don't do that. Three, two, one, fire. I see the bullet splits. Blade doesn't fly in half, which is a relief. That's almost identical damage, Paul. Again, you can see where the bullet left a little scar running along the side. All right, good job. Thank you. So next up, the sharpness test. And for that, I'm going to turn you over to Doug. 
Bladesmiths, to see how sharp your weapons are, I will take your sword and deliver a slash using each side of your blade, and I'll deliver a thrust. James, you're up first. You ready? Let's do it. All right, James, let's talk about your sword. Your edge is razor sharp. On the delivery downward, it was easily into the bag and slashed into it. Your tip, not coming to an exact point, but because of that edge geometry, was easy enough to thrust into this bag. And your blade will cut. Good job. Thanks. Paul, you're up next. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. After the way James has cut that bag, I'm scared to death. And I'm just praying mine will cut. All right, Paul, on the cuts over here, it starts to lacerate, but not deeply enough to go into the bag. The edge geometry you have of your tip over here isn't as sharp as I thought it would be. This did not penetrate the bag at all. When you flipped it over, same thing also with the other edge. It did lacerate, but not as deep. Overall, your blade will still cut, not as deeply. Yep. Next up is the kill test. The cat's bulger is a weapon that was used in history to kill. I will take your sword and I'll deliver lethal blows on this pig carcass. James, you're up first. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do this. I'm ahead at this point. That doesn't mean I'm going to stay there. Hopefully, it will kill. All right, James, let's talk about your blade. This section right here, it nicely sliced into the carcass. It chopped through the spine into some bone, and overall, your blade will kill. Thank you. Good job. Paul, you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. This kill test is going to be harder on the strength and durability of my blade than the bullet. Hoping it doesn't warp and doesn't crack. I'm actually very nervous that my blade may break. Nope. Well, Paul, unfortunately, your edge over here, some areas are rolled. And it hit the mark, but it did not lacerate or cut into the pig. So unfortunately, your blade will not kill. No edge at all. Bladesmiths, the weapons tests are now complete. The judges and I will meet you back at the forge with our final decision. Thank you. Gentlemen, I know you've worked very hard on your blades, but in this arena, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. And that champion is James, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion. Thank you. Paul, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Paul, there are only six bladesmiths in the show that can say their blades are bulletproof. You're now one of them. Thank you. Thank you for bringing us a sword and split a bullet. I appreciate it. Thank you. Paul, please surrender your weapon. I absolutely agree with the judge's decision. Paul, thanks, Mike. Thanks. Appreciate you guys. I mean, I just ran out of time. There's nothing else. Congratulations, man. Thank you. His blade performed the way it's supposed to, and mine performed like a spoon. I may not be the Forge and Fire champion, but ladies, I'm single and ready to mingle. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> Love the dance. <laughs> James, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion, and we'll be leaving here with a check for $10,000. Good job. Thank you. I'm the Forest and Fire champion. I will never win points for prettiness, but with the tests here or on the battlefield, it's not the pretty weapon that wins. Good job. I'm very lucky to be able to make a living creating something useful, and I will use my winnings to make more blades.